Well, hi there. I'm going to show you today how to make a ruffled pillow cover. My daughter wanted some new throw pillows for her bed. She's sort of redoing her room in like a khaki color and this blue. She's 17, so it's kind of a sophisticated look, but she still loves ruffles. She's very girly. And so we made a cute ruffled pillow cover. So that's the tutorial for today. I'm very excited to share it with you. I am so excited that ruffles are coming back into fashion for home decor because ruffles are so pretty and they're so fun to make. So anyway, before we start, make sure you click subscribe. And if I mention any links in this video, those will be down below. So I'm going to go ahead and create a PDF printable version of this pattern for my shop. So if you want to make this over and over again without having to refer back to the video, you can go grab that. You can go grab it. Go grab that from my shop. I will definitely put a link to that so that you can have the printed out instructions for more convenience. So let's get started. What you need is a pillow form or stuffing. This is a 16 inch pillow form, but I'll try to include how to make this for any size pillow form that you have. She had older pillows that were 18 inches, so the concept is all the same. And then you need a fabric. I'm making two of these 16 inch pillows with two yards of fabric. And that was with just a narrow ruffle. So if you wanna make a wider ruffle, you'll need more. And let's see. Oh, since my fabric is sort of on the thinner side, it's like a cotton gauze. You can see that pretty texture on there. I'm going to line my pillow with flannel. You don't have to do this, especially if you're using a thicker fabric, but if you're using stuffing and not a pillow form, then I do recommend it because that will prevent it from looking lumpy. My other choice would be cotton batting, quilt batting. Just anything to make it sort of more substantial. My fabric's pretty thin, so I'm gonna use this flannel. Flannel is my favorite kind of interfacing for all kinds of projects, if you have not noticed. Okay, so what I have done, since my pillow is 16 inches square, I cut my pieces 17 inches square, cut two of them, because that will allow me some half inch seam allowances. And then for my ruffle, she wanted just an inch and a half ruffle, so decide how wide you want your ruffle, and then since you're gonna fold it over, you double that. So I wanted an inch and a half ruffle, so I doubled that and that makes three. Then you add one more inch for seam allowances. Okay, so say you wanted a five inch ruffle, then you would cut it 10 plus one is 11. So you'd cut it 11 inches wide. And then I just cut three strips the width of my fabric. I only had enough fabric for three, but I think it turned out pretty full. You want it to be about one and a half times the circumference of your pillow or twice the circumference for a more full ruffle. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do, after you cut your pieces, I'm going to baste a piece of flannel onto the back of each one. Okay, so I'm going to flatten my 17 inch piece out on my flannel and cut all the way around. Alrighty, then I'm gonna pin this together. Okay, because I'm using this gauzy fabric, if you've ever used a gauzy fabric like this, you'll know that it can kind of stretch out as you sew it. So, if I have a quick tip for sewing a sort of stretchier fabric onto a non-stretchy fabric. And that is to, when you sew it, put the stretchier fabric on the bottom while you're sewing because the feed dogs will help move it along. So if you've ever tried to sew, even if you've sewn a knit fabric to a woven fabric, I don't recommend that, but if you have to, <laughs> then sew it so that the stretchier knit is on the bottom. So I'm gonna sew this with the flannel on top and I'm just going to baste it together a quarter inch from the raw edge. And then I'll do that with the other piece too. Okay, I've basted my pieces together. That's the optional step. You can skip it if you're using thick fabric if you want to. Okay, so now I'm gonna prepare my ruffles. Okay, so I told you I cut three of these. And now you're going to, I cut mine four inches by the width of the fabric. So now I'm going to stitch the short ends together into one long length, and then I'll stitch that together into a two. So make sure you don't get them twisted. You should have one long circle of your ruffle pieces when you're done. Okay, here's my very long ruffle strip. And I went ahead and pressed my seams open. So now you're going to go press this entire strip in half this way. 
hot dog style. Okay, I've pressed my whole strip in half, so it's one long loop with no twists. So the next step is to sew gathering stitches. You might have seen one method of gathering where you can just zigzag over a piece of thin yarn or string. The only time I use that method is when I'm doing something very large like a like a nursery set I made one time, like the dust ruffle, because it was so much. Otherwise, it might be easier to gather, but I don't think it's easier to stitch on the ruffle. I think it's easier to get more tucks in the gather. So I always use the traditional method. So what I'm going to do is put my machine on my longest stitch length. On my machine, it's five. Most machines go up to four. And I'm going to start at one seam and I'm going to put, put basting stitches, one long row on the half inch line and then another row of basting stitches just inside that at like three eighths. So you'll have two rows of gathering stitches. You can sew it all in one long length, but I like to find the halfway point and do two halves of my basting stitches. So I'll have stitches that start here and end here, and then I'll have another row that starts there and ends at the other stitch. That's just gonna make it easier for me to gather onto my square pillow in like one quarter at a time instead of trying to get the gathers all the way around, if that makes sense. So when you gather also, you wanna leave the tails pretty long, not like crazy long, but just about you know several inches so you can pull on them. Okay, so I have sewn my stitches into my ruffle, breaking the stitches at the halfway point over here. So you can see I have two long rows of basting stitches here. So now I'm marking the quarters. I already have marked the halfway point. So my seam where I started is one, and then I marked the other half here. Okay, if I bring those two points to meet, then I can mark my other two quarters. If you used four, ruffle panels instead of three, then your seams will be your markings. Alrighty, and I did the same on my pillow. I marked the quarters. So now I'm going to place the seam where I started stitching up here on this pin. And then my other pins, I'm going to match them to the quarters of my pillow. Alrighty, so now I can work in quadrants since I have threads here, threads here, and threads at both of these two places too. I'm just going to gather one quarter at a corner at a time. So you grab the top two threads, leave the bottom ones loose. And that allows them to slide like so, and you can just gather it up. You just pull with your right hand, if you're right-handed. <laughs> Move the gathers along with the other hand. And keep moving them until they're gathered enough to fit onto the pillow's corner. And you want them to be even. You don't want to have some parts where there's no ruffles or where it's just flat. And the rest of the parts where it's overly ruffled want to even them out. So once I get them gathered enough, I can start spreading them towards the pin, and I'm going to pin them in place. When you come to a corner, you don't have to make a sharp turn like this, because if you notice our pillow form has kind of rounded edges. They don't need to be a totally sharp corner. But you do want ruffles in the corner because if you spread the gathers so that there's no gathers right in the corner, then it might pull when it's turned right side out. And the corners will look weird. So I got that side pin. Let me gather it up enough for this side. Okay, once I have them gathered up enough, I can wrap my thread ends around my pin in a figure eight Trim it so it's not so long, and then finish pinning this side. Okay, so I'm gonna do that with all four sides. So next I'm gonna move over here and gather up this corner. Okay, I got my second quadrant done. Now I can flip it. Since I have more threads over here to pull, I'm going to pull the other two corners from this side. 
Okay, I'm around to the last side. Secure my threads. Gathering can be kind of a mess of threads and strings because, you know, the fabric unravels, you have thread everywhere. Okay, now I'm going to go baste this in place right on top of my most inward row of basting stitches that I already made. If you get it right on top, then you can avoid having to take any basting stitches out later. So I'll go do that step. Okay, I'm all basted in place. Now I can trim all these threadies. I'll trim them now, but I'll still probably have to trim some when I turn it right side out. <laughs> I can hear my son hammering outside. He's on, he's doing leather work. <laughs> Who am I to stop him, right? Okay. So here's our beautifully gathered ruffle. Lastly, we're going to, well, almost lastly, we're going to pin the back of the pillow onto the piece we already made. So when we sew this piece on, we're gonna sew it from this side so that you can see, oh my gosh, all of my kids are so loud, I'm sorry. When you had little kids, did you think teenagers would be quieter? Cause it's not true, it does not happen. The reason I'm gonna sew it from this side is so that I'll be able to see where I just stitched. So I'm gonna try to sew right on top of those stitches I made to sew my ruffle in place. We're also going to leave quite a large opening for our pillow form insertion. If you're just stuffing it, your opening doesn't need to be so large, but it's difficult to get a pillow form in if you don't make a big enough opening. So I'm going to start here at this pink pin and then I like to put two pins in where I'm going to stop. So I remember I'm going to stop right there. So I'm gonna leave this entire edge almost open. So of course this time I'm not going to use a basting stitch. I'm going to use you right. I'm going to go use a regular stitch length and sew my pillow in place. Okay, now that we have that all sewn, we can go ahead and trim these corners. If you're using very bulky fabric, you can trim the rest of the seams if you want to, but mine is pretty bulky with the flannel on it and I don't find it necessary. So that's up to you, but I do trim the corners. Okay, now we can turn it right side out. Best part. So cute. Ruffles are so pretty. Okay, you can see I have a lot of excess threads from my Ravelry fabric. I will trim those off and I'm going to go give this a press because I like I like a nice pressed ruffle. Okay, I think I got all my little strings taken care of. So pretty. We are going to shove this pillow form into the pillow kind of a wrestling match, or it can be, especially if you didn't leave your opening big enough. Don't worry about the corners until you get the whole thing in there. Shove it in and then you can work the corners where they belong. Okay, I like to give it a big shake. Beat the pillow against your legs a few times and that should work it in there to where it goes. All right, it looks really pretty. So the last part is just to sew up this opening. Please do not attempt to do this by a sewing machine. <laughs> I used to teach kids classes and when left on their own to free sew, we called it, they often would make pillows for their little dolls or whatever. And usually to avoid hand sewing, <laughs> they would try to shove this under the sewing machine and sew this opening closed. It did not work well. Even with a zipper foot, I know you've noticed your store-bought throw pillows have sewing, have machine sewn openings, but I promise you this will look so much better. So I've pinned my opening closed as if I had sewn it. I have this heavy duty thread, but you don't have to use this. Okay, I'm gonna double it up. Knot it. Then to, I'm gonna remove my first pin. To bury my tail, I like to go in the opposite direction so that it's easier to shove my tail inside the opening. Okay, then 
We can go along, grab a little bit of the ruffle, tiny bit of the pillow, and pull and just keep going. Get my thimble. My favorite thimble are these leather ones. I'll put a link to these for you. Metal ones, I just find they hurt my nail for one thing. <laughs> and the needle can slip off of them. I just don't find them comfortable. But I love these leather ones. Speaking of store-bought pillows, I do not understand why they are so expensive. <laughs> Throw pillows are so easy to make. You can make them out of so many different things. You can find, you can raid your linen drawer. I've made pillows out of Goodwill denim. I've repurposed tablecloths into pillow covers. I found some vintage Christmas tablecloths that I made Christmas slip covers for my couch pillows so that I can change them seasonally. And the best part about making seasonal pillow covers is that you don't have to store big pillows with your Christmas stuff. So that's a genius idea for you. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. Almost there already. See how my stitches really kind of disappear? And I'm even doing this at an awkward angle to video it. <laughs> Sorry again about my loud teenagers. They're watching Studio Ghibli. <laughs> Studio Ghibli, you're never too old. Okay. That was the end of my opening. So now I'm just gonna knot it, pull up a loop, insert your needle, do that one more time. Then to bury my tail on this side, I just insert it, bring it out somewhere else. Oops, don't get a knot. <laughs> there we go, and snip. There we go, looks beautiful. I know she'll be happy with this. She really loved the other one. I hit her in the face with it first thing cause she scared me when I came into the kitchen. <laughs> there you go, I hope you've liked this tutorial. I would love to make more pillow videos. If you wanna learn how to make one with an envelope back like I make my Christmas slip covers, you let me know and I'll get on that one soon. I'll see y'all later, bye.